in your region. This production is for adults only. Welcome to the Cannabis 101 Podcast, part of the Cannabis Life Experience. Your guide through the legalization and consumption of cannabis in Canada and beyond. Join us on this journey and adventure with the wonderful plant. Here's your host, Dean Millard. Hello there and welcome to episode 81, hour number two of the Cannabis 101 podcast. My name is Dean Millard. Thank you so much for joining me. And remember, it's not just about getting high, it's about getting healthy. And uh, we can all, all benefit, I think, from the uh, wonderful plant that is cannabis. However, on this show, there is uh, one way that we like to get things going. And that's by finding out what's your groove. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Can you dig it? Kind of grabs you by the boom boom, don't it? Pipe in a crate, bong in a blitz. This is great. This is the bee's knees. So when I say what's your groove, I'm asking that while you're listening to this, uh, if you're grooving on anything when it comes to cannabis, uh, you know, it could be a, a joint, a bong, some nice CBD, you got some edibles, one of the many drinks that are out there. Um, if you are going with some cannabis while you're listening to the Cannabis 101 podcast, I would love to hear from you. Hit me up on Twitter at the Cannabis 101. You can get us on Facebook and Instagram at the Cannabis 101 Podcast. And you can email me as well, Cannabis 101 Podcast at gmail.com. And you can totally be anonymous. Well, I am uh, still, uh, if you've uh, been uh, following the show the last a couple of weeks, uh, dealing with pneumonia still. So I'm not doing uh, any, if uh, or much, if at all, inhalation. Uh, I will do a little bit when we get to know your buds in a second, but not very much. So. I'm going with some more tea, and uh, this is the Haven Street um, Citrus Berry, and uh, it definitely has that uh, sort of, it's, it's like a bit of a, almost like a tropical taste to it, but it is uh, delicious, and uh, it does in fact have THC in it, so 10 milligrams of THC, this is what it looks like uh, for those of you watching at home, if you're listening and you'd like to see what it all looks like, head to our YouTube channel, uh, Cannabis 101 Podcast. Pretty simple to find it. So that is what I'm grooving on. It's very blue. I don't know if I have blue lips or not, but uh, I doubt it. So that's what I'm grooving with. Would love to know what's your groove as we get things going and we find out exactly what is coming down the hash pipe on this episode. Uh, we're going to have a double shot of Plant Life because Ty Steger, uh, the Plant Life guy, you've probably seen his great videos on their Instagram account uh, when Instagram is allowing cannabis accounts to be up <laughs> on their platform. Uh, anyway, he does a great job of it. And Ty's uh, one of the regional managers with Plant Life Cannabis. So he's going to join me. We're going to talk about uh, the job, what they're doing. They've got uh, an exciting rewards program coming out very soon. And of course, Chris Ionson. Uh, regional manager with Plant Life Cannabis as well. He joins me every episode for Know Your Buds, and we are going with Kush Mints from Quest this week. Quest is definitely uh, top shelf talent when it comes to uh, cannabis production, so stay tuned for that. Our cannabis question is uh, the same one from Monday. It's about retail. You can win a prize back just for chiming in. We will have what pairs well with cannabis. We'll have our cannabis character. It's from American Dad. And we'll tell you about the Weed Weekly a little bit later on. But let's uh, indeed 
get things going with the cannabis question. It's prize time. <laughs> Chime in on the cannabis question. Okay. And you could win a Cannabis 101 podcast prize pack. Pipe in a grape, bong in a blint. Hit us up on any of our social media feeds or email us at Cannabis101podcast at gmail.com. Okay, here we go. talking retail outlets on our cannabis question and i want to know what your go-to retail store is and why uh, tell me why uh as well as just where it is uh, i'm a, i'm you know there's two plant life locations in my uh city st albert uh, so uh, i go there i've gotten to know the staff and that's awesome that's that's a really big part of um, you know me purchasing cannabis is knowing who is selling it to me uh, so my regular places are places I go where people I know uh, are working there. Um, I also, I try to get over to Green Rock uh, Cannabis in St. Albert. Daniel is a great, uh, great uh, manager of that store and very knowledgeable, especially, uh, you know, if you want to know some uh, cooking tips, uh, that guy has some great ones. So those are the kind of the go-tos and, and why for me. It's the people. Uh, and, you know, obviously they have to have good product and they do. Uh, so I'd like to hear from you. What is your go-to retail store and why? Uh, hit me up on any of our social media feeds, at The Cannabis 101 on Twitter. On Facebook and Instagram, it's The Cannabis 101 Podcast. And as mentioned, you can email me and be anonymous. Just let me know you'd like to be anonymous. You could still win the prize package uh, for why telling me why and what is your favorite and your go-to retail outlet as for what pairs well with cannabis uh, that is anything that you like to pair uh, with cannabis and uh, i'm going with cross-country skiing right now uh, not that i could go cross-country skiing because i don't have a lot of lung capacity right now but we have got we have received um, uh, quite a bit of snow in the last little bit temperatures are down close to like the minus 30s with the wind chill um, but it's on a cold crisp day and you're out there, maybe you're by yourself, get some music going, you're in nature, uh, you just get into that rhythm along with the music. Um, I, I, when, when I get out and do any kind of individual activities like that, that's where I'd love, you know, either smoking a joint before I go or having some edibles a little bit before and, you know, whatever it might be. Um, you know, maybe you take the, uh, the, the slash from Stonesmiths out there and, uh, you know, it's a, so the battery is built for Edmonton winter. So this would be the perfect thing for the cross current. You put it inside, pull it out, you take a couple of hits, boom, you're set for your cross country, cross, cross country. Um, easy for me to say little excursion. So well, that's what pairs well for uh, me is uh, activities like cross country skiing. And I just mentioned uh, uh, the Slash from Stonesmith, uh, one of our great partners along with the OZ. Uh, De uh, David Wiley joins me on Mondays and Malcolm LaBelle from the Green Generation Co. also on Mondays. Um, wonderful partners that we have here and great uh, local uh, companies, uh, especially um, to with the, with the Stonesmiths. Uh, Stonesmith.ca is where you can find them, but you can find them right here where I'm located in uh, the Edmonton area. So I love working with uh, passionate people, and uh, hopefully uh, you viewers and listeners are also passionate about the plant as well. So check out all of our partners. You can find them at Stonesmith.ca. They have the wonderful slash with the built-in loader. It is simply outstanding okay we are going to get to our guest of the day uh when we we uh discuss things with ty steger the plant life guy in just a second until then we're going to hear the weed song from the artist my dad dog <laughs> Some 
really pleased to welcome to the Cannabis 101 podcast, Regional Manager with Plant Life Cannabis, uh, Ty Steger, uh, joining me. Ty, thanks for being here today. How are you? Oh, Dean, I'm living my best life, sir. Thank you very much for having me on the show and uh, looking forward to getting to know you better, sir. Yes, uh, I've uh, been looking forward to this conversation. This was supposed to actually happen, uh, I think, a couple of weeks ago, but uh, unfortunately, I had a hard time doing the interview while lying in bed, uh, basically comatose for five days. So thank you for being patient and uh, flexible uh, with the uh, the appearance. appearance. I always start off uh, kind of every interview uh, the same way because uh, I think it's relevant for everybody that I interview, and that is what did you do before the cannabis industry? Because with it being, the, I guess, the legal cannabis industry recreational, uh, because it's only uh, two and a bit years old. So, you know, what was your career path before you got into cannabis? I spent about almost a decade now in the service industry and uh, started out as a door guy of all places in a I'm sure you know where Lloydminster is, and you know what? Great city in a lot of ways. But listen, if you don't have to stay the night, just drive on through. You're not missing much. But I, I started my career with the company that I was with for the last you know, decade or so there. Uh, door guy, manager, uh, bar manager, to eventually a corporate trainer, and then what led to training manager. So my passion is training people and developing people for whatever it is they're specializing in. Uh, in the service industry, it was like, if you're going to be a server, let's make you the best server. Porter, let's make you the best porter. So I was cultivating um, training documents and getting people ready for the next level of whatever their progression would be in that industry, which is a very rewarding uh, job to do. And now I do it with cannabis. And because the slate of where everybody is in the cannabis world compared to something like the service industry, where, you know, service industry has been around for decades now, is we're all starting out at the same level. And it's the give a shit factor and the ability to take somebody and coach and develop them into, you know, an amazing bud tender or a store manager, for example, that is setting the pace for this industry. Because without that, without the training and the development and that give a shit factor, you have a lot of people that are misinformed and don't do their jobs well enough. So I kind of am still a training manager at my at the core of what it is a regional manager kind of does for plant life cannabis. Um, I like to consider myself the head trainer, but uh, yeah, you know that's where that's where that all comes from is just years and years of the service industry of just seeing how do you take somebody who's that sixteen. 18 year old starry eyed guy or girl who wants to be, you know, living their best life in this industry and, and form, you know, them into a responsible, educated adult into that, you know, bartending and all that kind of stuff. Well, and it kind of uh, touched on something there that I find really interesting. You know, you, you have years of experience in the service industry. The cannabis industry does not. Like, it's, it's you know, really important. There were already a lot of people that uh, wanted to see this industry fail right off the bat. So it's really important to get it right right away because this is brand new. Now, cannabis has been around, uh, you know, since, you know, way back in, in time. But the legal cannabis industry needed and, and it was very important to make that good first impression. 100%. There's a lot of people that have been around cannabis for a long time, and they maybe are the people that are unfortunately representing the stigma. And when I think about what did all of Canada need right out of the get-go was to establish there is a huge difference between what people believe cannabis is and what it can be. And we have to be allowed to get there. And we're only going to do that from erasing the stigma. And the stigma is the biggest hurdle of this industry flat out across the board. And the only way that we can do that is by having people in our stores that do not reflect whatever that quote unquote stigma is not just from a visual perspective, that doesn't matter. It's how we talk to the people and how we are putting cannabis in their hands that really dictates whether or not we are a part of the stigma in that way. Well, yeah, and listen, if, if there is anybody out there right now that thinks the typical cannabis user looks like these guys, the characters uh, from Cheech and Chong, then they're, they're just naive and, and obviously have not done enough research. This, this is a plant that is in the hands of, uh, 
you know, uh, college students to CEOs and everything in between. And, uh, that, you know, that, that's the, one of the reasons that this show exists is to kind of fight that uh, stigma a little bit. Um, when and why did cannabis become a part of your personal life? We, 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 you know, people will find out on one hitters about your first experience, which is a good story, but you know, when did it kind of become a regular part of your life? Uh, it didn't actually become like a really cemented regular part of my life until this career kind of shaped and, and legalization happened. And I didn't even know that it was going to be, I didn't know it was going to be as big as it was, you know, like I kind of talk about in the one hitter segment, once upon a time, I wanted to be a cop. So there was a large timeline of my life where because cannabis is bad and, you know, it was illegal and, you know, if you do it and you're the opposite of what you want to do if you want to be a police officer. Uh, there was a lot of years where I didn't consume whatsoever. So then now you kind of circle back to when I'm now in the the service industry, I'm around cannabis a lot more just as a result of that. And, you know, I start regularly consuming a lot more, enjoying my time at home and, and in the privacy, you know, of just settling down or unwinding at the end of the night. So that's how I kind of got into it from a just consumption level, right? Just uh, where I was in my personal life. But how it happened professionally is, you know, the, the, where I still work now with plant life cannabis is uh, attached to, you know, the Canadian brew house. So the Canadian brew house was where I was working before and the ownership came into my office during a time when I was just making training documents in my position that I was in and dead ass looked at me and just said, do you consume cannabis? And yes, I was consuming cannabis. But now I'm like, I'm shitting my pants because I'm like, why is the ownership in my office asking me if I consume cannabis? And where do you want some? Like, where do you go from here? And so I found out that they were creating a brand surrounding cannabis. And, and what they wanted to do was get some ideas about putting documents together. So fast forward uh, two years after the fact of having that conversation in the office and getting legalization kicked off with our first location at Lloydminster. Um, and now we've got, you know, 23 stores across Alberta. And it's been one hell of a spin cycle of a ride. That's, oh, I, I you know, like that's uh, kind of instant, like, you know, fear of the unknown with this question. <laughs> that's kind of an interesting approach. But I'm sure they were looking at somebody that knew, you know, and had a little bit of a background for looking to it. So it, it all worked out. Now, you talk about, uh, you know, kind of training people being at the heart of what you like to do. And I'm always interested in talking to different people uh, from, from different positions. So tell us a little bit about what a regional manager does with Plant Life. For plant life, the primary, uh, the one thing that I'm always focused on is the growth and development of others. It will always be my number one concern because we are growing so fast. Again, within two years, we have 23 locations. So if you think about it, relatively once a month, we have a new location pop up. You have to staff it. You have to have proper onboarding procedures. And you got to make sure that whoever it is that's going to be operating that store is trained and developed properly. Because you can't just go to you know, place like Walmart or Home Depot or anything like that and say, hey, who has management experience? And, you know, 20 people raise their hand and you pick one and then say, come with me, you're available. And that's not how you want this industry to grow. You've got to have people that have been with you for a little bit of the ride to really understand what your brand is and what you're trying to build. So everything that I do in my capacity is all about trying to take somebody who is at a stage of just beginning in the industry or somebody who is experienced in the industry that maybe had the wrong idea of what it can be from whether it be a different brand or different experiences and really try to give them the tools in their toolbox to succeed because we're growing so quick. The one thing that I do have to do is expand my team. And if you have people that don't believe in you, that don't believe in your brand, that are constantly on a revolving door, there's no way that you can even keep up with the demand from just a hiring perspective to make your business successful. So I do a lot of that. The, um, th there's always kind of comparisons, I guess, um, you know, when you, when we're looking at cannabis, people make a comparison to the alcohol industry or the, you know, the service industry. And there, there's certainly some similarities with, you know, dealing with age and, uh, you know, intoxicants and things like that. What's, what is the biggest difference um, or maybe biggest challenge uh, compared to that service industry and the, the, the restaurant bar industry? The biggest challenge between, let's say, selling alcohol to people 
and selling cannabis to people is that more often than not, people, you know, come in with the intention of maybe they're, they're out for a good experience. You know that they're looking for an experience. That's why they chose your brand to come and enjoy food and drink and all those things. So it's actually not very difficult to put, you know, a beverage in somebody's hand and actually give them that good time because them being away from whatever it is that they were doing before is probably the escape they were looking for. With cannabis, you have you know, a menu of sometimes two to 300 different things behind you at any given moment where you can put into somebody's hands who comes in. So if you think about it, you have a menu of 300 items, you have one person working and you're having an engaging conversation with somebody who's across from you and you have to tell that person, why is it that they want the one thing that you're either suggesting and what experience do they actually want from the product that you're giving them? It's not about, hey, like, welcome to plant life, you're now partying. It's no, no, Plant Life's going to give you the supplies for the party. You're going to go have the party somewhere else. But the challenge is actually being able to say, okay, look, I got uh, sativas, indica hybrids. Do you know what that is? And really starting to understand where their levels of experience are and then engaging them to understand what experience they want and then being confident enough to turn around and saying, this is what you need to go have a good time. Mm -hmm. Especially with everybody experiencing it differently. Like we're all, we're, you know, it's like fingerprints or snowflakes. We all experience it a little different. You and I could have the exact same cultivar and I could fall asleep and you could be talking a mile a minute because of our endocannabinoid uh, system. So that does present some unique challenges, I'd imagine, with recommendations. Yeah, you can't, uh, you have to understand again what the experience is that they want. And then you have to also ask, Outside of like, what do you like to do when you get high? When I ask that question to people, they say, uh, I want to unwind. You know, 99% of the people that I come in and talk to me are like, I want to get a better quality of sleep. COVID sucks. Yeah, sure. I get it. Pretty much, you know, like who doesn't want that? So if that's the case, then I say, okay, so we've established that you want to unwind and you want to have therapeutic qualities. So let me talk to you about like how often have you consumed? Uh, when do you like to consume? Is it going to be at night? Is it going to be the during the day? Is it going to be with other people? And what effects do you actually want to feel? Aside from just it being therapeutic and unwinding, do you want to attack your fridge? Do you want to eat everything in the fridge? You know, do you want to just uh, melt into your couch? Do you want to paint a picture to relax? Like, how do you want to relax? And suddenly you start to really learn about that person. And this is the most rewarding and the most challenging part about being in this industry is it's an actual give a shit conversation that you're having with somebody about what do you like to do and how is this going to enhance it and make it better for you? And you can really find yourself having conversation, whether it's like gaming, for example. I'm a big gamer. People come in to buy cannabis for gaming purposes all the time, but they don't lead off with that. They don't tell the person working at the, the, the desk, like, I can't wait to go play the new you know, Skyrim mod uh, later on tonight. And then I say something like, oh, is it a first-person shooter, MMORPG? Like, what kind of game do you enjoy playing? And suddenly you're having a conversation that's engaging and you're making a connection with people. So now that I have that connection built, I can turn around and really feel confident about the thing that I'm going to suggest to them. And that is the challenge. And that is the thing that most people miss and don't understand about this industry. You know, that's really good advice, actually, for, you know, if, if, if somebody walks in and they're asking for something by a, a terpene, you know, they're, you know, kind of focused, laser focused and on what they want and, and what they can experience. But for somebody that's new to cannabis, that's really good advice to, to walk in and say, hey, I'm going camping this way. I'm going canoe, you know, I'm doing this one. I'm, I'm playing a game. I'm going to a movie. I'm, you know, whatever it is. This is what I'm doing. What do you think about that? And then and it gives the person a little bit of an idea, even though we're all different about kind of, you know, where they might go. So it's really good advice for, for people that are new to cannabis. Um, you know, if, if you have a specific event that you want this cannabis for, to, to be upfront about that and, and you know, tell the, the butt tender, you know, how they might be able to help you with that. So I, I think that's really good advice for, you know, people that are new to cannabis. Absolutely. And I'm promising you right now, there's nothing that we haven't heard as a, this is what I plan to do later on. So right. don't be afraid to come in there and, and be honest because most people do this. They shut down and they look at the menu and they don't want to engage with somebody who's working at the cannabis uh, retail shop for a number of reasons. And more often than not, it's because that person believes that they already know more about cannabis than the person who's working. And yes, that might be true, but they do not already know what the 200 things behind the person working at the cannabis shop is. Mm. And 
unless they actually know the, the cultivars behind the strain names, unless they actually understand, like, this is why this cannabis costs a little bit more, because the quality is that damn good. And it's not measured by THC percentage, which a lot of people think that's what cannabis quality is measured in, which is completely ass backwards. But that's an entirely other story. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things that people have to understand coming in is that don't be afraid to have a conversation. And you know what? You're going to be able to sniff out the people that are just working at a cannabis retail shop who are just in it to be able to, whether it's get a discount on cannabis or whether it's just like they are the stigma and they don't even know how to provide an experience. There is clearly those people who exist within our, um, within our field. And when you think that you're dealing with those people, please go away from that situation and find somebody who is willing to have that engaging conversation about what it is you want to do later so that you can actually make a connection with that person, have the experience you want. More importantly, you've got a new professional drug dealer who does not want that. Um, tell me about the plant life guy. Uh, that's something that uh, you have a lot of fun with. Yeah, Plant Life Guy was an idea that uh, the ownership came up with just saying, hey, wait, we can pretty much take social media by storm. Let's let's make a lot of fun videos and throw them up there about product reviews and how do we want to do it? Almost like if you were watching, a, you know, a YouTube star, they, they put all the comedic stuff behind it and they, they make it something that's really engaging for somebody to watch. That was the idea. And it was like, what do we name it? And ironically, I had already created my own Instagram account called Plant Life Guy. And so it was like, all right, well, that's what this show is going to be called. That's what this little segment on, on your Instagram is going to be. And so we recorded it here at Plant Life Studios, which is a couple of the offices that we have here at our head office location. Um, and we were just, you know, messing around and having fun with it. And we were given complete autonomy. It was like, hey, get in front of a camera and uh, let's just shotgun this, uh, you know, 10 milligram cannabis beverage. And it was like, you know what, that sounds like a great idea. Let's just see what happens <laughs> you know, and talk about it and review it and, and just make fun of it and make fun of ourselves in the same light. But cannabis, I think, you know, because if you think about all the effects of cannabis, you know, nobody's sitting around crying because they consume cannabis. It's always about laughter and opening up and having fun. So I think it's important in this industry to be able to poke fun at yourselves. And that's mm -hmm. why we really wanted to do that and get in the social media front right away and show people that, hey, like, yes, we are a business. We are serious. We love what we do. We have a passion for it. But if you can't make fun of yourself and you can't have fun with cannabis, then you're probably not cut out for this industry. Where's the best place for people to watch those? Uh, Plant Life Guy, all one word on Instagram. The only issue is, is that we've had a lot of struggles with getting it back and up and running. So right now it actually might be down because there is a lot of people out there who, whether they know it or not, when they do flag or complain about any of the content that you see on Instagram, and that could be something as simple as you or I leave this conversation, Dean, we go on Instagram, anybody's channel, and just make a, a report. Well, all it takes is one report or one flag for that entire content with all the videos to get taken down. And that has happened to us multiple times, and we might be in that boat right now. Hmm. That's so frustrating. I mean, you know, it's the same reason why... I can't use an app for my volcano on my iPhone because uh, it's it's frustrating. And, you know, that's a lot of people look and say, well, why does the why do the United States need to federally legalize? A lot of the states are doing it. And yeah, that that is true. But for a lot of these companies like Facebook and Instagram and Apple and, and everything else to buy in, they need that rubber stamp. And, and it's really, really frustrating that. We live in a country where it's legal, yet we can't talk about it on Instagram sometimes because in that country, it's not. Yeah, it's legal with limitations and limitations that are kind of hypocritical of what the message really is at the end of the day. You have, oh, cannabis shops are open. And yes, it's a huge part of the economy, but God forbid you actually be able to see inside of one of the stores. Mm -hmm. yeah. But take your baby into the liquor store, no problem. I'm not saying that that's you know, wrong. But if you're going to say that it's okay to do that, then why not? Why not? Why is that the the why is it that cannabis is still blanketed as being something that you should be afraid of? Mm -hmm. And in terms of being able to be available on your app, that's your phone. You should have the ability to add apps to it if as you please, regardless of who the manufacturer is and whatever, you know, what what whatever third party app it is, you should have the autonomy of being able to add it. And it's not just the volcano. There are other um, different 
uh, sorry, vaporizers and other different apps that have been created mm -hmm. to allow for that to happen, to control the temperature, for example, and now no longer available because why? Because God forbid a grown adult make a, make a grown up decision about what it is that they want to have on their phone. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be anybody's business, but the individual, in my opinion, but here we are, right? Yeah, there were companies that completely had to pivot on what they were doing because of that uh, kind of decision. And, you know, it's, it's you know, no, listen, people think, you know, when we talk about this, they're like, oh, it's just, you know, cannabis uh, complaining again about things. Well, well, what I think the cannabis industry wants is not special treatment, just equal treatment. Just allow this industry to be on a level playing field. I mean, Apple has all these emojis for drinks. I, I tweeted out or put it on Instagram the other day. I said, they're going to have an opiate uh, emoji before there's a cannabis emoji because opiates you can actually get from your doctor in the in that situation so I, all anybody wants i think is just to be treated equal and and you know not have to try to create this industry with one hand held behind our backs 100 percent, it's impossible and if we are constantly the people that are being attached to the strings while everybody's doing this and dance mm -hmm. puppet dance it's not going to have a lot of movement the way that we want it to. We have to have the ability to say, hey, like we own enough stores now that we understand some of the landscape of what we're dealing with. And those people that are making the decisions for a lot of the regulations and things like that are really watching it from the glass tower and not making confident decisions and not necessarily listening to some of the things that we know we could really help move the needle on that makes sense, that makes it equal. And yes, equality is one of the main concerns that I have with the future of this industry because if you think about it like if you look at um, history will always repeat itself and there's a lot of things that we've done where we've we've said okay no alcohol you can't have alcohol and how mm -hmm. long did that last and what were the repercussions of that and and you know whether it was the black market became a thing um, a lot of issues both you know economical political things like that kind of came up from that decision and now that we have cannabis legal we should have the confidence in the government to make decisions that are going to not only give more access to cannabis in the in the the correct ways but not encapsulate it into the 90s when you had those anti cannabis commercials the propaganda that was hey like look at becky becky's sitting on the couch and becky's an absolute piece of shit because she consumed <laughs> cannabis and now becky can't walk it's like none of that makes any sense and yeah. that's not accurate and and that was only please don't forget like we were we were alive for that you know what i mean and now you fast forward and it's like oh all this information is available well why can't that bleed into the business aspect as well and not just be okay now we appreciate it on a scientific level mm -hmm. expand the horizons a little bit and let us have a little bit more freedom towards access they've gone from becky to the guy who forgot to order fries in the drive through so those infomercials or those psas have not gotten a whole lot better even though we're in this uh, world of legalization well you guys have uh you know this this plant life world and this ecosystem what is the plant life family program what can you tell us about that so we're going to actually have a reward program that's going to be available to the public in the spring and we're really excited about it so um we don't have it available right now but when you do have the opportunity to talk about it when you come into plant life cannabis i highly encourage it ask how you could be a part of the family there are a lot of different brands out there that have their own rewards programs and we are being competitive in the market and doing the same thing now we have you know everything from apparel we have a lot of different types of um merchandise like i've even got a coaster right here you know a plant life cannabis coaster for when you want to come in and buy one, some of the beverages as well so this reward program is going to allow you to uh, reap the benefits of um, purchasing with us and we support you for supporting us and that's kind of how we feel about it um so yeah anyway it's going to be available digitally it's not going to be something that's tracked manually or analog version in store or anything like that um and by the way if you do want to check out our apparel plantlifeapparel.com appreciate you throwing that up there uh yeah so anyway plant life family it's coming soon it'll be coming in the spring make sure that you talk to your bud tenders about it and get signed up so that we can give you what you deserve which is recognition for being a part of the family well, I love the apparel. Uh, Ian was kind enough uh, to, uh, Ian Scott was kind enough to, uh, when he came on this uh, show, back when we were allowed to have people in studio, he brought me a hoodie. 
uh, and I love it. I, I wear it constantly, uh, especially when it's minus 30 like it is out uh, in uh, in our neck of the woods. So so I love it. So let's talk a little bit more about what you guys have, you know, other than those sweet hoodies. Uh, we see some hats. Uh, you know, what should people be checking out? What do you like about the uh, Plant Life Apparel? What catches your eye? Oh, the ticks are great. They're extremely warm. And I, I actually just had a toque that I bought from a brand that'll be, you know, I will not mention but uh, I had it for about a month, and it was a very reputable company. Had the toque, the hat, the actual toque top blew up, and all of a sudden I can't use it. And I'm like, I paid good money for this toque. Yeah, the actual top stitching just completely exploded. I got a big head, but I don't got that big of a head. And so you buy a Plant Life Cannabis toque. They're made with great material. They're extremely warm, and it'll get you through the cold winter months, um, keep you warm during COVID and all that kind of stuff, right? As you're just kind of navigating the depression that is this winter. But uh, we've got lots of different options for for hats and sweaters. My personal favorite is actually you have it on the screen there, the camo hat. Um, it's a fan favorite as well. Um, and if you are a fan of that flat brimmed, um, oh God, I can't remember the name of the company of them right now, but. Uh, Anyway, those hats, you can recognize it right there by the sticker. It just won't come to my name right now. Um, those are the kind of hats that are quality. They're the snapback ones. You got to check those out. You got to check out our sweaters as well. The sweaters are uh, hugely popular, and we do sell out of certain sizes in a hurry. So whenever we do restock, if for whatever reason you go on the website, you don't see the size that you like, please come back and check within a week. We usually restock them as quickly as we can. And the color that you're looking at there, that light gray, um, pattern is by far our best seller in terms of the color. Uh, so we do have, uh, you know, guy sizes and gal sizes, um, all the way up to two XL, I believe. So anyway, give it a check out, uh, support the brand, uh, become a part of the family, get into our stores and we'll get you signed up on the, the plant life family. Good stuff. I like it. I always love, uh, wearing and uh, supporting and helping uh, this industry as we're, as we're all kind of, you know, we're all, you know, you guys are competing at different retail stores and, you know, I compete against, I guess, different shows or whatever it might be, but we're all doing what we can to take the industry to a point where then we can really start competing with each other. But right now it seems like everybody's trying to help out. So I love to be able to support, um, especially when I can wear some cool gear. Um, we're, we're basically a full year uh, now dealing with uh, COVID. What have been some of the challenges, I guess, from a retail point of view over the last year? I know one of the things that I, I thought was brilliant, what you guys did to overcome challenges, is you, you mentioned you guys have the affiliate, the association with the brew house. Your Plant Life employees were basically fed brew house meals during the pandemic because we know how tough it was and with staff. I thought that was wonderful. One of the ways you overcame a hurdle of staffing is to help people with that. But what were some of the challenges? Uh, well, the biggest challenge, like you mentioned before, was when you watch people that you genuinely care about from a manager level struggle on their personal or professional basis on a day by day, you know, that's tough. That's tough because we were lucky enough to be considered, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for essential here? Mandatory, service. you know, essential. thank you. We were an essential service. Yeah. So there was a huge waiting pattern for when that was going to happen. We, we weren't sure, you know, and we're watching what other provinces are doing and everybody's getting very worried. And, and it's not like this isn't a glorified industry where people are making, uh, you know, thousands of dollars on a week by week basis. That's not how it works. Like uh, it's competitive pay. Don't get me wrong. But like you're watching people that if they lose their opportunity to continue working, uh, we know that it's a double edged sword. Number one, uh, we know how that affects them on an individual basis. And that's really tough, especially when you're responsible for a workforce of, you know, we're approaching a thousand uh, team members here pretty quick with our 23 locations. And um, when you think about it, if you can't do your job in this industry and you really do enjoy coming to work and you enjoy the distraction from something like COVID, which at the time was a welcome opportunity just to be able to get out of side of your house and, and be a part of something, whether it's an essential service or whatever that might be. And if you're a part of this essential service, you're helping people genuinely every single day. People are coming in and saying, I can't, you know, like I want to be able to just forget about what is going on in the world right now. And we were sitting there thinking this might 
this might not happen. And if we don't have the opportunity to help other people, that in itself is a giant shame. But then to our team members to watch them have to go through this as well and, and suffer from the emotional baggage of what COVID was doing to their own families. And we had people come to us and say, like, I don't want to be a part of the workforce, even though I am essential. So I'm going to walk away and take care of my family and take care of my number one priority. And we 100% said, good for you for making that decision. And we 100% support you. And we had some team members that did that. So now the challenge that kind of grew out of that situation was, where do we go now to recruit people to help us in this time? And how are we going to make sure that this is done, this is organized as much as we possibly can make it, that we're going to train these people correctly? How long are these people going to be with us, uh, you know, once their life comes back online because they were not a part of the essential services? So now we are hiring people that are not a part of the essential stuff that want to keep their, you know, their families, they want to keep their families fed. So it was... It was a very emotional roller coaster to 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 watch your own team and then to also have to worry about getting new people in and taking care of those people as well. And then of course you had other people come back. Once we were made an essential service and once people, you know, spent two months away from the brand, okay, now people are coming back to us. Uh, they've missed out on a lot. There's a lot of new products. We got to get them up to speed. But the one thing that hit the most, you know, closest to home was just watching people that you genuinely care about go through this struggle. Uh, it brought us together and it made us stronger as, you know, the plant life family. And we, we take care of our buds. That's no pun intended. That's one of our core values. And we stand by that core value. But I would never want to do it again with the uncertainty of what are the health risks? What are these what are the messages to the teams? What happens if somebody at a team level, like what happens if one of our stores has COVID? What do we do then? So the uncertainty was very scary and the challenges were just, they're still challenges. They're, they're not even done yet. Yeah, no doubt. Um, one of my favorite things um, is uh, finding out, you know, when my store's order day is. And and, and for, for people out there, it's, an, it's another good thing to ask when you go into your kind of neighborhood cannabis store. It's like, you know, when does your new order come in? So I love Mondays uh, in St. Albert. Uh, I, I go see my good friend Gage, uh, who, you know, Jensen Lakes or, or Aaron Rich, depending on the day, and the recommendations that he makes. I love it. He recommended those Pop Rocks uh, chocolate uh, the other day. I absolutely loved it. So it's great to form that relationship with your bud tender get those recommendations i love going in on an order day and and getting something new uh so i ask you what are some of the the uh the the cultivars you've really enjoyed that are maybe new on the scene in the last few months oh wow uh well it's very difficult a lot of people don't know what the term full spectrum actually means when it comes to something like distillate oil mm -hmm. um and it's a term that's thrown around a lot but people are you know constantly worried about you know is there terpenes maybe in this distillate oil? Well, the the thing that you're looking for, if you're somebody who is that kind of connoisseur or canisseur rather, is you're looking for full spectrum. And we do have that now. So one of the brands that I really enjoy that is full spectrum cannabis distillate oil is called Reef. And they have uh, an indica and a sativa that's currently available and a one-to-one -one that's phenomenal. So if you're a distillate oil fan, check out the Reef. The indica, sativa, and the one-to-one -one are all great. Um, if you are somebody who wants to try something that is brand new to the market, please take a, uh, a stab at getting bath salts mm -hmm. and bath bombs. Mm -hmm. These are two new formats that we're really excited about. They are on the market because they offer a lot of therapeutic qualities. So whether it's that unwind factor, and this couldn't come at a better time because of everything that's going on still with COVID, this is something that I think a lot of people should try to get their hands on and, and go home with a you know train wreck or a Bubba Kush bath bomb from Stewart Farms, uh, amazing brand, and, and just see what it's like to just sit in your tub and just kind of almost in your own float tank and just kind of meditate. And it's yeah. a very cool experience. I would agree. I have uh, the Blue Dream uh, bath bomb from uh, Stewart Farms. Blue Dream is my thing. That's my jam. It's my uh anti-anxiety depression fighter so i absolutely love it so i love the uh the, the bath bomb idea for sure um what about uh accessories uh, you know we've talked a little bit about in one hitters but what are some of the the accessory products that you're liking that you're seeing on the market in the last little while 
Uh, I really like that we're getting into e-rigs uh, to, to be able to just do a dab safely without it, you know, and electronically without it having to be a torch, without it having to have a nail, without it having to have all these things that make it look really part of the, again, the stigma when you look at it. And it's like, that looks like it can be done cleaner. And I really like that e-rigs are doing that. They're very appealing for that reason. So if you're somebody who enjoys concentrates, um, whether it's an e-rig that is kind of portable, like uh, the shape of this pen, for example, that you can literally put a little grain of rice uh, concentrate in there and enjoy the vapor, the vaping experience. Or if it's something that's actually like a tabletop or desktop, mm. yeah, you got one in your hand there. What's, the what's slash, that? That's, yeah. the, that's the slash, yeah, yeah. from Stonesmiths. Yeah, and they're incredible. Um, we have them at our Plant Life locations as well. So if you're looking for one, I mean, obviously you're a fan. Um, mm. I am as well. So there's that option or there's the desktop version of it as well. And the desktop is going to be just a bigger, batter version of an e-rig that's going to allow you to just consume bigger, batter dabs or just share it if you're with other people, being COVID safe, mind you. <laughs> yes. um, but yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely the accessory I'm keeping my eye on. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting a, a desktop uh, rig like that. I, I have a, a Volcano Hybrid, but I'm really looking forward to getting the desktop for, for the concentrates. Can you just give a quick explanation? You mentioned full spectrum and people unsure. So maybe for the newcomer out there, what you maybe explain what full spectrum is when they hear that word. It's kind of a bit of a buzzword right now. Absolutely. So the easiest way to explain it is this. If you want to just erase all the noise and all the, 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 the BS about it is... Does this distillate oil have real terpenes? Are the, terpene, the terpenes either being reintroduced or are they inside the distillate oil? Or is it uh, botanical terpenes? So botanical terpenes is a term or artificial terpenes will literally be printed on the back of your ingredients list when you're looking for distillate oil. And you want to ensure that if you're somebody, again, who's a connoisseur who enjoys uh, more about the quality of oil and less about the taste. The botanical terpenes are fake terpenes that are basically artificial um, just oils or, or, or flavors or whatever that are added to the distillate oil. And you will know that it is artificial or botanical by simply reading the ingredients list. Stay away from that stuff if you want to be able to try something that is full spectrum where you will get the added benefits to your endocannabinoid system in your CB receptors, which are all throughout your body. That's what the endocannabinoid system consists of. And you take a shot at distillate oil. You're a heavy consumer. You want to be able to get the full effects of something like smoking a joint. You're going to have more success with something that is full spectrum as opposed to just looking for the highest THC distillate oil. Excellent. I found that uh, very uh, easy to follow and a good explanation for a lot of people. Okay, let's wrap up with this, and, and it's something that I like to end all my interviews with. What do you think the next big thing in cannabis is? I mean, we went from season one of just, you know, flour and oil to, you know, now we have these great products. You know, what is something that is really going to take the cannabis industry to the next level in the next little while, do you think? I think people getting used to the idea of getting outside of their comfort zone with just dry flour is what's going to make the dynamic shift in terms of buying habits and is going to create a culture that is geared more towards uh, things like oils, whether they are um, solvent based or non solvent based. So essentially, whether or not they're just being created from heat and pressure uh, versus something that is, you know, CO2 or butane extracted. Uh, those are the differences between solvent and solventless based extractions. These are the concentrates that people are consuming, and that's what people are afraid of. People should not be afraid of concentrates because in its purest sense, it has a lot of purity uh, to it. That's why it's called a concentrate. You're taking cannabis and really taking all the cannabinoids and all of the terpenes and really being able to condense it down. The in places where cannabis has been legal for a long time now, you know, whether it's a decade or beyond, places like California and Colorado, for example, you can see the shift from people just always buying pre-rolls and dry flour. And, you know, the concentrate sales started here. And what has shifted over that decade is the concentrate sales just continue to climb and just continue to climb. And there's a reason for that. It's, it's, it can be substantially way more potent. Um, it could be, you know, a cleaner, uh, more efficient type of high than just smoking the dry flour. So anyway, I think that shift is going to happen. It's a matter of time, and it's up to us 
to educate and to explain why there are benefits to smoking concentrates or vaporizing concentrates and why you should try those things. And I think that's what's going to be the biggest shift. You're going to start seeing people actually want to be having a distillate oil pen, or they're definitely going to be wanting to have an e-rig sitting at their home on their shelf, just like you have the, uh, the Stonesmith, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, without having to pull out a torch, for sure. That's a big thing uh, for a lot of people. Ty, this has been so much fun. People can check it out, plantlifeapparel.com to get their latest gear and uh, wait for the Plant Life uh, family program to come online. Thank you so much. I look forward to more of the Plant Life guy. And uh, yeah, uh, enjoy the, the dream that we're living in, legal cannabis and working in this industry. Thanks so much for joining me, Ty. I hope I don't wake up, Dean. Thank you very much, sir. This is the Cannabis 101 Podcast, part of the Cannabis Life Experience, turning the wheel of cannabis one toke at a time. That was a fun conversation, and we're going to have uh, 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 more fun with Ty later in this uh, week, uh, probably coming out on Saturday, as we get to know his cannabis histories with one hitters. You can find it and full episodes at www.cannabis101podcast.ca, where you can also subscribe to The Weed Weekly and qualify for our Friday giveaway. We'll tell you uh, a little bit more about that as we roll along in the program. You got a joint? Uh, no, not on me, man. <laughs> It'd be a lot cooler if you did. Time now for Cannabis Characters. Dopest dope I've ever smoked. Celebrating the best from fictional 420 film. Hey, I am your stoner. <laughs> and beyond. Yeah, Maybe care with that, man. Uh, well, is it heavy stuff, man? <laughs> All right, on our cannabis character segment today, it's actually uh, two characters voiced uh, by uh, the same person in the same scene. Uh, so I had to go with this one. Uh, it's uh, Stan and Roger, Stan Smith and Roger Smith, I, I guess. He's part of the family in uh, American Dad. And it's uh, they're both voiced by Seth MacFarlane, the creator, the family guy, etc. Very funny show. I... I, I liked Family Guy. Uh, I, I really liked the Cleveland show. They canceled that. Not a lot of people did. But I also really liked American Dad. So in this particular scene of this episode, Stan and Roger are end up in a barn. Uh, Stan is the father, by the way, if you've uh, never seen the show, and a CIA agent. And Roger is his alien friend that becomes part of the family. Anyway, they end up in a barn full of marijuana and uh, a fire happens and as uh, they get high they end up like many of us do in a convenience store and hilarity sues uh, ensues rather um, a lot of us have been there I think in the uh, convenience store trying to figure out what's going on while you're high uh, just like uh, Stan and uh, Roger ended up happening so let's check things out from this episode of American Dad I got an idea. I saw this in a movie once. Hop with me. That's good. Why did you do that? Well, you weren't going to do anything from a movie. I feel funny. It must be the smoke inhalation. It's killing my eyes. Stan, do you, do you feel lighter? I'm definitely getting lighter. I think I'm becoming immune to gravity. Why is there a leopard on the Cheetos bag? Wait. It's a cheetah. Cheetah. Do you live here? Because I can live here. This place is great. Hey, look, someone picked out all my favorite stuff. That'll be... And this! Cat food? If I hold this, I won't float away. Oh, my God, we're high! Of course! When the barn burned, we became pawns in marijuana's mellow chess game. Freeze! Hands in the air! All right, so a uh, couple funny things about that. I love the uh, mellow chess game. And if you're watching, you'll see in the bottom left-hand part of uh, your screen here, uh, 
Roger's actually floating away now because apparently cat food was the only thing that uh, could help him um, stay on the ground. And he was floating away because he dropped the cat food. So pretty funny stuff, I think, from American Dad. Uh, Seth MacFarlane is a, a comedic genius. He's he's hilarious. Um, doesn't uh, seem to take himself too seriously either. So from American Dad, that is Stan Smith and Roger Smith, uh, voiced all 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 and many more by Seth MacFarlane as our cannabis characters on uh, this episode of the Cannabis 101 podcast today. This is the Cannabis 101 podcast. It's all part of the cannabis life experience. Turning the wheel of cannabis one toke at a time. Uh, great stuff. Our voice team of uh, Christine Bandalo and uh, Kevin Dabbs, uh, wonderful partners like Stone Smiths. You can check them out at stonesmiths.ca. The slash is wonderful. It takes four seconds to heat up, and then boom, it is uh, all cylinders of firing. Uh, and it's got also uh, three temperature settings. So just uh, click this three times, and uh, you switch to the next temperature. When you double click it, boom, boom. It's a 12-second uh, auto-fire mode, uh, so it is uh, wonderful. I can't wait to get uh, back to being able to use my Slash because I absolutely love it. You'll love it too, especially if you're a retailer. You'll want to get this uh, in your store, so check it out at stonesmiths.ca. You can find it at Green Rock Cannabis in St. Albert, uh, Lethbridge, uh, soon to be Edmonton, very, very soon, I believe, this weekend at uh, a new location for Green Rock Cannabis. All right, let's get into Know Your Buds. Who grew it? What's the terpene profile? Who created it? What is the lineage? How much THC? What's in a name? This is Know Your Buds, a close-up look at cultivars you should try, or try again. Joining Dean is our educator, Chris Ionson. Always great to catch up with my good friend Chris Ionson, regional manager with Plant Life Cannabis. I love our new music. It's just a, a real grooving kind of uh, way to get into this, and uh, it's a lot of fun. So, Chris, uh, what's new with you guys? I know you've probably had a pretty busy week. Uh, another one, another new one with Plant Life. Uh, yeah, Dean, totally. Uh, it's been it's been go 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 down here. I've been down in uh, the southern Alberta. Uh, Operating out of Calgary, but uh, hitting up uh, six six stores in in the area here. Uh, really getting to know the the plant life family. Um, yeah, it's been uh, amazing. Uh, yeah, everything's gone really well, and uh, yeah, even uh, um, you know with the new store opening up too. I'm uh, super pumped. That's that's going to be happening soon too. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been real real awesome, buddy. That is excellent. Uh, we'll tell you all about that uh, store opening. Uh, after we get through an absolutely delicious cultivar that we're looking at today, uh, this is Kush Mints we're talking about. It's a 50-50 hybrid, uh, and uh, this comes to us from Quest, uh, and this is uh, you know, a very high-end uh, cannabis uh, the, that they produce. So the parent company of Quest is Decibel, so give us kind of the backstory of Decibel and Quest. Yeah, for sure, Dean. So uh, the Decibel Cannabis Company, um, formerly Westleaf, um, and they did the switch in December of 2019. Uh, they're the parent company. Uh, they were created in 2017. Um, they put a serious focus on craftsmanship and, uh, and a commitment to perfecting the process. Um, their cannabis brands are Blendcraft, uh, Quest, and uh, General Admission Vape Carts, which are some of my faves. They're uh, real tasty carts. Uh, so all high-end, high-quality cannabis, um, and then they've also got a, a line of retail stores in Saskatchewan and Alberta called Prairie Records, uh, with a really cool focus on on music. 
That is awesome. Uh, music and cannabis go uh, great together. I've got the uh, the record up there as well from uh, another LP. So that is uh, is an awesome focus to be able to pair those uh, together. And we, we should point out Quest is a, is a higher end cannabis. So if you are going uh, to pick it up at uh, your local plant life store, you are going to pay a little bit more. But as we're going to tell you as we go, you're getting premium amazing cannabis and, and sometimes I get really excited as you know about like a backstory of a cultivar or a breeder or or an LP uh, in this case I'm really excited about the man behind quest uh, tell us a little bit about this guy yeah definitely Dean uh for sure so yeah Qu quest cannabis was founded by uh Ed Chiu uh he is um an amazing Instagram follow uh, I've been following him for a bit it is Honestly, one of my, my favorite Instagram accounts for it's, it's weed porn, uh, just <laughs> nothing but big buds and, 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 uh, you know, facilities with, you know, tons of plants going and, uh, it's just awesome. Anytime I talk to anyone in the industry about, you know, good Instagram follows, um, I'll, I'll bring his name up and they're already like, Oh, I follow him. Uh, so <laughs> anyone out there that, uh, you know, hasn't checked it out, it's uh decibel CC, uh, dot ed, uh, on Instagram. Uh, it's a, badass follow for um, kind of keeping up too with with quest and what they're doing um, he's also one of their master growers too so you know very hands-on with the plants um, and Ed was the man who worked closely with uh, the genetics legend capulator uh, mm -hmm. to bring the Mac one genetics to quest and um, I'm such a big fan of the Mac one uh, cultivar uh, big fan of cap too um, so just hearing that, you know, Ed, Ed played a big part in that, uh, you know, he's, he's a legit cannabis OG, um, definitely someone I'd like to, to burn a doobie with, uh, you know, once all this COVID stuff's over with, um, so Ed Chiu is, is the man uh, behind quest there. And, uh, I, I definitely, I got to give some love to, to, uh, and a big shout out to, uh, to Mo, uh, my boy over at Decibel, he's the Northern Alberta account manager there. Uh, we had a, a nice catch up phone call today and. Uh, you know, he gave me some, some real awesome information just about, about the company there. So uh, thanks so much, Mo. That's uh, good stuff. Uh, good people making good cannabis. So let's talk specifically about how uh, they get their cannabis into this uh, perfectly rolled joint and other forms. So what's the process with Quest? For sure, Dino. They, uh, how they grow, it's small batch, uh, hang dried, uh, dry trimmed by hand. Uh, ensuring buds aren't overly handled, uh, protecting the trichomes. Um, their buds are fed uh, glacial uh, mountain water uh, with uh, fortunately just a perfect pH just naturally there. So uh, they're able to, uh, to feed their plants with this glacial water. Uh, they've got three facilities. Uh, the, the main one, kind of the, the first one to, to really get going was the, the Quest Estate. And that was formerly from the We Grow side of things. Uh, it's 100 acres. Um, 100 acre estate in the Creston Valley, uh, cannabis country, as, as a lot of people call it, and in beautiful British Columbia. Um, they have that provincial water license that I mentioned that allows them to access the fresh water from the creek that runs through the property. Um, it's a 26,000 square foot indoor production facility with 10 grow rooms and two veg rooms. And uh, I was a big fan of seeing this uh, approximately at, uh, 1,000 square feet per room, uh, no, no bigger than that. Uh, love that. I love seeing the, the smaller size rooms. Keep it small batch uh, is the way to go. Uh, and they also have a, a tissue, tissue culture lab. Uh, and uh, and they also have some, you know, rock and genetics in their portfolio there. They've got the Mac 1, uh, the Gelato 33, which is the Larry Bird, uh, pineapple cake. And uh, yeah, uh, also one of my faves too, Dino, the, uh, the pre-98 Bubba Kush. Mm. Yeah, I, I love that one so much. I, I want to see it back. I haven't seen it in Alberta for a while. So uh, if anyone from Quest is listening, please bring it back to Alberta. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the uh, the Quest estate there, Dean. Mm. Um, and actually, yeah, there's the uh, the photo of it right there. So uh, just a, a gorgeous facility uh, what a right in the mountain. Drop, hey? Yeah, that is absolutely gorgeous. What a backdrop. Uh, for sure. So that that's the main facility, right? Yeah, that's right, Dino. Uh, the secondary facility, which is uh, not quite licensed yet, but will be very soon, like will be operational very soon. Uh, it's called Thunder Child Cultivation, and it's near uh, Battleford, uh, Saskatchewan. And this is going to be their large-scale, purpose-built craft cannabis facility. So it's 80,000 square feet. 
Uh, it's going to have 20 grow rooms and uh, kind of be like what the Quest Estate is, but on a larger scale. So uh, keeping, you know, the same kind of uh, growing, I guess, habits and, t and tendencies, uh, but on a larger scale. Uh, and it's named after one of the company's uh, first and largest investors, uh, the Thunder Child First Nation. It's an ind independent Cree nation based out of uh, Turtleford, Saskatchewan. Uh, so that's Thunder Child. Uh, and then the third facility is called The Plant, uh, and that's their extraction and processing facility uh, located right here in Calgary, where I'm at. Uh, and that's a 16,000 square foot facility with an additional 45,000 square feet uh, available for expansion. Uh, and this is where all those delicious general admission carts are made. So uh, The Plant is there in, here in Calgary. Uh, and those are the three main facilities, Dino. Wow. So it sounds like they certainly, uh, you know, have that progression plan of, uh, you know, starting out with that beautiful facility in, in Creston and uh, moving forward. So uh, we got a little bit of a glimpse of that website. The website, again, is www.questcannabis.com. I'll uh, bring it up here. And I, I find this website, first of all, just the, the, the photos are sharp. The images are crisp. Yeah. It's a really beautiful looking uh, website uh, and then you kind of get into some of the information we showed you the uh, the pictures that they have but uh, you know as as you can kind of talk about what you like about this website I'll scroll down from the many 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 I feel like the guy from police academy many cultivars uh, that they have it's just a, it's quite a stable they might say if we were talking about racehorses no doubt. I, I like that a lot. Quite the stable indeed. Yeah. Um, some serious, serious genetics there. Uh, and all, all pretty rare too, all unique. Um, I'm a big fan too of when you, when you actually click into a cultivar there, they've got like kind of three, three pages per, per cultivar. And it's very consistent. Each, each cultivar is going to have the same information, uh, genetics breakdown, terpenes, um, a little kind of write up about it. Um, and then the, the pictures, like I, I, all the pictures on there just make my mouth, uh, water. Um, it's all just tremendous looking, but covered in trichomes. Look at that. It's just gorgeous. Uh, and, and that's, you know, that's part of attracting people. This is part of your ability to advertise. Of course it is age gated and, and things like that. So, you know, a website in a industry where you're not allowed to advertise, it's really, really important. And, you know, we've done some different LPs in the past where, you know, the website was either under construction or was non-existent. And this is a, a real a powerful way for, for these companies to get their product out there and the best looking product that they have out there through their own site. Yeah, Dino, right? Uh, yeah, well said. It's, it's uh, for me, this, this website's a, a real full package deal there. Uh, good information too, you know, in the about section, uh, and I'm also a big fan of like the the aesthetics of it, that the black uh, mm -hmm. and the, that kind of like mint green. Uh, yeah. It's very contrasting. Just works really well. Easy on yeah. the eyes. Yeah, I uh, I would agree. Uh, it is uh, it is a good looker. That's for sure. Packed with a lot of information. So let's get some information on the history of Cushmints. Uh, what are we talking about for the lineage? Yeah, Dino. So Cushmints is uh, is Bubba Cush crossed with animal mints. And that gives us the the Kush mints. Uh, and Bubba Kush is a, a Northern Lights cross with the Triangle Kush. Um, Northern Lights, just classic, classic cultivar there. It's in all kinds of genetics. We always see it come up uh, if you really look at a genetic breakdown of a cultivar. Um, and then the animal mints we've got is uh, animal cookies and, and cinnamon cookies. So a, kind of a, a double down on the cookies there, um, giving us the animal mints. And uh, those two cross create uh, Kush mints. And it was uh, initially bred by California cannabis genetics legends, uh, seed junkie genetics. I feel like we've talked about them a, a little bit. Let's say in the last yeah. couple of months, they've come up quite a bit. And, uh, and they're responsible for some amazing cultivars like, like Sunset Sherbert, uh, LA Kush Cake, Cake Crashers, uh, and, and many other awesome ones. They've got a, a real awesome list. Uh, that is delicious sounding. And, and, you know, when you mentioned Northern Lights, it, it seems to me, it's one of those kind of like foundation cultivars that, uh, you know, it would be impossible to, you know, to pick the top cultivars of all time, I think. But I think that Northern Lights is one of those ones that's just, uh, it's, it, it's in so much. So it's kind of the foundation of so many other cultivars out there. 
It, yeah, it is. It's you see it all over the place. I, I think, yeah, definitely, it's it's up there in I guess one of the the founding fathers. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's it's prevalent in a, in a lot of genetics there. I think uh, maybe other ones too might be like a, a haze or a skunk number one. We we see those kind of come up in a lot too. There's mm-hmm. there's you know, someone should write a book. You know, about like the. Uh, <laughs> the 10 most influential uh, cannabis genetics out there. Cause you know, I feel like there, you could, you could list 10 real good ones there that, you know, have just created and created yeah. uh, and spread their, their genetics all over the world. You know, what would be a good book is the top 10 most influential cultivars written about some of the most influential people in cannabis. So you have, you know, uh, somebody writing about this cultivar and why it's so influential, but it's those people that are, you know, I think Time Magazine or somebody does that. They'll have, you know, somebody, um, you know, very famous person write about Barack Obama or something like that. So I think that would be kind of a cool idea that, you know, the, the top 10 most influential cannabis people talking about the most influential cultivars. Yeah, I would. I would love to uh, to see that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we're, we're giving away our our best ideas for free here, so we got to stop doing that. <laughs> All right, let's yeah. get to the THC percentage on the the batch that I picked up uh, from uh, Jensen Lakes uh, in uh, Saint Albert at Plant Life today. And this is twenty seven point six percent, and this that that's getting up there. In you know, I you know, we we've seen some creeping up to twenty nine and thirty before, but you know, this is. Uh, this, uh, you know, when you average it out, this is pretty high, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. 27%, that's a hard hitter for sure. Um, we don't see that, that those numbers too too much in the in the rec market. Um, so definitely a hard hitter for sure. Okay. Uh, what's in a name? Tell us what you think this is named after. So I, I think it's just a, strictly a genetics name. Uh, you know, we've got the Bubba Kush and the Animal Mints. Give us Kush mints. Uh, I think it's also taste related too with um, the flavor. There's there's some mm-hmm. uh, subtle kind of mintiness uh, to the, the taste of, of the Kush mints as well, Dino. Indeed as well. All right, let's get into the look of this. And you're, you're looking at uh, the pre-rolls uh, on there right now. Uh, I, I'll start with the, uh, the tub here. Um, and... Uh, the, the, when when I look at this tub, the first thing or what I love about it is it's just really easy to open. You just push on the side, pops open, and then boom, your two pre-rolls are in there. Nice that there's not two tubs uh, for two pre-rolls. So I like the uh, the packaging. Uh, it's easy to get into as far as that, and it's you know still you're not gonna you're not gonna force it up if it, if it's uh, somebody that doesn't know what they're doing. So there is childproofing with it uh tell us about the actual pre-rolls and uh how they come to be yeah most definitely you know so initially uh off the start uh, quest was doing um pre-rolls there were one gram pre-rolls and it was a two pack uh and i feel like uh there was a little bit of a feedback from the the you know the customers out there people were looking for their half grams options and this, so they've made the switch uh now we're going to start seeing uh two packs all both half gram in there uh, and every pre-roll from Quest is hand-rolled and hand-weighed, uh, and they use vegan pa- uh, papers, and those papers come from a 200, over 200-year-old 200 uh, French mill. So uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, and then, as you can see in the photo there, it's you know got a, a Quest-branded uh, a filter, too. Um, they're, I get the Quest pre-rolls all the time. I'm a, I'm a big fan. They're one of my go-tos for sure, Dino. Well, and that just uh, kind of, you know, adds a nice human touch of uh, loading these up and twisting them off. And, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the, the one that I pulled out was in fantastic shape. So nice to know that, uh, that there's that human touch with it. Uh, let's talk some terpenes. Uh, what do you have for us as far as terps? For sure, Dino. Uh, pinene is the dominant terpene. So that's uh, kind of the, the pine aroma, as one would, one would guess. Uh, limonene is in there, too, and that's kind of the citrus fruity uh terpene uh we've got caryophylline in there dino your fave and that's mm-hmm. uh black pepper kind of a spicy a spiciness to your cannabis and then uh linalool is in there as well and that's kind of the floral lavender uh very heavy terpene there um pretty good mix though uh four of four of my my jams actually pinene is uh quickly becoming my favorite one dean yeah. and uh yeah it's uh good to see it right there at the top 
Yeah, and Linalool is quickly becoming a kind of a second favorite of mine. So I think we're both are really going to like this. I, as far as the smell, I, I asked Nosy McGee uh, to smell it. She's on strike though. She said she's not smelling until I start doing more dishes. Uh, so Nosy McGee, for anybody watching, is my wife, who who Chris and I always try to give the blind taste test to and get her honest opinion. And she doesn't smoke, uh, use uh, marijuana. It's uh, the odd edible here and there and more CBD. So we get a real, uh, and we don't tell her anything about it. So I, I couldn't get that blind to the smell test this week. But I got some, some kind of... Uh, Minty pepper, uh, if if that kind of peppery mint uh, taste. I don't know. What do you get when you smell it? Yeah, Dino, I, I got that too. I got pepper and pine uh, with a, a subtle mint to it as well. Um, I also felt like it was, and it's going to sound weird, but it just smells it smells proper. It smells like it was grown mm. and properly. Um, yeah, very Fresh. enjoyable. And when I've, I've, I've had like the 3.5 of the Kush Minks uh, quite a few times. And uh, yeah, it smells delightful looks amazing too i yeah. should have mentioned that when we were talking about the looks there well but that's the thing that you know the the look the smell of the plant it for me it just smells healthy and and you know yeah. for, you know as you mentioned fresh just the way cannabis uh should be so so i really like that so um you know normally we have these pre-rolls and uh, as you know as you've been out here normally uh, it would basically uh, look like a cheech and chong movie at this point because there would be so much smoke going if we were doing pre-rolls but I'm not the healthiest right now. I'm still getting over uh, pneumonia. Uh, I'm not even doing this a lot, but I'm gonna. What I've done, Chris, is I've just, um, you know, b basically uh, taken apart the, uh, the the wonderful pre-roll that they've done, put it in my uh, volcano uh, because that's how I'm gonna use this today because I don't think it's a, a smart thing uh, to be smoking. So just for everybody out there, that's what I'm going with uh, today. Is uh, instead of the pre-roll uh, lighting it up, I'm gonna use the vape in, in, a, in a small amount. But what is the taste that you get? with Cushman's uh for sure Dino so for me it's first off delicious uh gotta say it's delicious uh, it's, it's kind of a minty uh minty Kush uh so it's got that kind of creamy gassiness there uh with definitely some spicy overtones um definitely a big fan of it for sure man it's uh it's nice now, when you talk about um, kind of that creamy Kush taste, can you explain maybe for people that aren't as uh, familiar with it what you mean by that? Yeah, I think it's just yeah, it's just a, a flavor that's you know associated with with Kushes. Uh, it's it's that that creaminess, kind of almost confectionery um, uh, taste mm. mixed in with, with some gas, right? There's some hard gas to it. Um, I know in you know in some. Uh, in some in some parts of uh, the states, there they refer to you know really good cannabis as you know you got you got that gas like uh, it's uh, and it's, it's they're asking for a kush. Yeah, I I like that. It's kind of like how people uh, in in all parts of the world can refer to just really good cannabis as BC bud. It might not be from BC, but uh, you know it's that terminology. So gas taste whatever. So okay, I'm gonna give a quick taste on this. Yeah. Go go easy on our two there, bud. Right? Like, yeah. I, I gotta be really I, careful, I, but uh... totally right. This, the pneumonia thing is serious, and like, I I think you uh, subbing out the the joint there for a bag is you know a smart option, right? And take take mm. it easy. Uh, we'll be smoking those doobies soon enough. <laughs> Indeed, you know it's funny. I get I get more of a minty taste than I did a minty smell. Uh, and maybe it was because uh, it's already in, in pre-roll format. And we always talk about after the grind. We didn't grind it up uh, this time. But I, I definitely get more of a minty. Uh, and I know what you mean about the creamy taste. Um, and yeah. it's, it's funny. I, I had more spicy, peppery in the, in the taste or in the smell than I do in the taste. So it's almost kind of reversed in the taste for me a little bit. But uh, I don't know. I, it's definitely tasty, though. And, and I'm not usually a mint guy, so I know I like it that it's not as overpowering as I thought it might be. Yeah, Dino. I mean, it's it's not like uh, drinking a bottle of mouthwash minty. Like it's yeah. it's it's a full mint, you know. That's that's there, and that's that's why I think I like it so much. Uh, and I think too, you probably were experiencing some, uh, you know, the fact that you put it in a vaporizer. Yeah. Um, you know, you probably got to enjoy some of those terps um, in in a good way. Indeed, uh, I like that. So what's, uh, you know, your experience? As we like to point out, everybody does experience cannabis a little bit different because of our endocannabinoid system. What is your experience when you hit Cushman's? 
For sure. So uh, for me, and I, I've hit Cushman's quite a bit. It's been uh, one of my one of my go tos. It's in my stable uh, quite a bit. Um, for me, the high the high creeps up. Uh, you know, it's 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 a real slow creep. Uh, but then when it hits you, it hits you really hard. Uh, I find myself to be stoned. You know, uh, <laughs> feeling great. Uh, that initial head buzz. You know, off the start. Uh, you know, filled with fun, euphoric, cerebral blasts. A blast to the head um, really makes me smile and laugh a lot. Um, well, I think this is one of those cultivars that uh, I think makes me funnier, or I, I think I'm funnier with with it. Yeah. Um, it's definitely uh, uplifting in the head and uh, and super super relaxing on the body. So once that initial kind of head buzz uh, kind of settles down a bit, uh, it, it works its way into a, a nice melty body stone uh, that is super enjoyable. Um, I think though, for, for me, it's, um, don't, don't plan, uh, you know, a big day of productivity. If you're going to be smoking this stuff, mm -hmm. uh, cause you'll find yourself just get your chill on, on the couch. It's pretty, uh, it's a pretty relaxing one for me. All right. So that brings us to the three W's of who, what, and when is this good for? And of course, these are just general recommendations, but what do you think when you think of the three W's for this? So I think who it's good for, Dean, is uh, level three. Uh, this is uh, mm -hmm. expert smokers are up. The THC levels are, are pretty high there. Uh, you know, I think um, someone who, you know, smokes quite a bit. Uh, yeah. Beginners, stay away from it, please. <laughs> no doubt. And, and that's important, yeah. uh, especially when you talk about it being a bit of a creeper as well. Um, you know, somebody that new to cannabis might not think it's coming on as fast as it should and then might go and have some more and with the high THC level. So that's why we kind of recommend on a level one, two, and three. So this is definitely expert. I like that recommendation by you. Mm -hmm. For sure, man. Um, when it's good for Dean, uh, evening time, definitely evening time right after dinner is, is one of my go-tos. Uh, I've also enjoyed it right before bed too. It's, it's super nice. Um, starting your day off with some Cushman's can, uh, can derail any to-dos you might have, as I mentioned there previously, it, uh, it definitely kind of puts you in chill zone. Um, and what it's good for Dean, getting your chill on, uh, like, like I said, right. Um, fully re just relaxing. Um, I know like on, on the quest, uh, the quest website that, you know, they list it as like a, a pretty balanced hybrid, but, uh, for me, my experience with it, it it's pretty indica dominant, uh, uh, pretty relaxing. Um, so it's it's good for yeah, funny movies, uh, documentaries too are really nice on it. Um, I enjoyed watching Oilers game on it too. That was that was nice as well. So sports uh, was really nice with the cushions too. All right, uh, so there that is the three W's of who, what, when, uh, Cushmints uh, from. Quest, uh, an excellent, excellent producer. Very, very high-end stuff. So exciting. Uh, I can't wait to uh, be able to uh, smoke joints again and be able to burn them because I, I think, uh, you know, whatever product you get from them is always top-notch. And I know you guys are going to have uh, a lot of this available at uh, your new Plant Life location that, uh, you know, is, is, will be open uh, as, as people listen to this podcast. Yeah, that's right, Dino. Uh, yeah, the Plant Life uh, Mahogany here in Calgary, uh, the southeast side of Calgary, is opening up today, January 27th. Uh, Going to be opening up in the afternoon, though. We're not doing a, a 10 a.m. open here. Um, but I was just there um, earlier today working on some last-minute preparations. The store looks amazing. Uh, the staff are really awesome, too. Uh, a lot of people are passionate about cannabis. Um, the store manager, Hannah, is great as well. Um, so, if people uh, listening, if you're in Calgary, uh, you know, come on down and check out the uh, the Plant Life Mahogany. It's a it's a nice big store too, with a lot of uh, a lot of really cool merchandising and uh, some good like uh, LP branding in in the store. It looks uh, it looks pretty sharp. That's awesome. Well, that's one of the things I love about the Jensen Lakes location is a lot of space and and things like that. And uh, you know, I had the conversation with Ty uh, earlier in this show, and I know he's really excited about the things that are coming, and and so are you. So lots of stores already, lots more on the way, and you can pick up some Cushmints uh, from Quest as you uh, head into those stores. Chris, thanks as always for joining me, man. We'll chat next week. Yeah, Dean, thanks for having me, buddy. It's awesome. The Cannabis Life Experience. It's not just about getting high. It's about getting healthy. Turning the wheel of cannabis, one toke at a time.
All right, that is uh, just about going to wrap things up for us. If you'd like to find past episodes, contests, or more, check out the Cannabis101podcast.ca, and you can find us on YouTube. This will also be streamed out on our uh, social media channels as well. If you did enjoy things, please let us know. Subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, click the bell. You'll get a notice whenever we have a new episode out. Uh, you can find us wherever you find podcasts. C- click subscribe and you'll find, you'll get it for each episode. And uh, leave us a review. Let us know uh, what you think of the show. Uh, always looking for great constructive a criticism uh, and head to the cannabis 101 podcast while you're there subscribe to the weed weekly uh, just hit the subscribe button and you'll get it every friday in your inbox we'll have a giveaway every friday and we also uh will throw in a few other fun things recapping the show along the way as well if you would like to join the show as a guest or a partner like stone smiths and the oz etc as well as uh, the green generation co Hit me up with an email, cannabis101podcast at gmail.com, and uh, we can chat about that, being a guest or being a part of the show as well. And if you're into other podcasts, check out podcastalley.ca. I have some sports shows there that you may just enjoy. Uh, We're back at it on Monday with a new episode, David Wiley of the OZ on This Week in Cannabis News. Also, Malcolm LaBelle from the Green Generation Co., on the business of cannabis, we'll have another uh, cannabis question. We'll have our weed word of the day and more. That'll be episode 82 coming out on Monday. Thank you so much to Ty Steger, uh, the Plant Life Guy, for joining me on the program. Also, Chris Ionson, Regional Manager with Plant Life on Know Your Buds, and you, the listener and the viewer. Certainly I could not have this show without you. As we leave you, as we always do, here is... Marijuana from the artist My Dad Doc. And a reminder, it's not just about getting high, it's about getting healthy. See you later. Mm-hmm.